Vince Vargas, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. So you, you've got one of the craziest stories. Last time we talked, we had you on the show and we were talking about Lucy Shimmers and we're going to talk about that film again, but you started sharing details of your story and I knew a little bit about it, but so many incredible fascinating details not just on the faith front but just the general life front you were a you're an army veteran you served in afghanistan you served in iraq and so i guess i, I want to start there because your story is just incredible what what led you into the military take me through that journey yeah um i was playing college baseball and it was my third year of college and i became academically ineligible and so it was kind of that decision to what next i've played baseball since i was four um i really didn't know anything else other than baseball i really believed i was going to go pro eventually and at the same time i had a daughter <clears throat> who was born and so it was kind of this in between i was trying out for some independent pro teams i had some calls from overseas about playing professionally in germany and they wouldn't allow me to take my daughter. And so it was kind of this very easy decision was, well, I'm watching the war on TV currently on, on CNN and Fox or wherever it's at. I can't really get away from it. <clears throat> and it was kind of a calling of, I think it's, it's what my next, my next chapter is, is serving in the military and that will be able to bring financial benefit for my daughter at the same time. And if the unfortunate happens that I do die in combat, well, I feel like I've fulfilled my job as a, as a father and, and as an American patriot. And profoundly, I believe that. I didn't think there was anything after baseball. I really didn't. Wow. I didn't, I didn't almost value anything past that, you know? And so, um, wanting to be a good father and be able to financially give my, my daughter something, you know, and then watching the one TV, like I said, I, I, I didn't want to miss out on that. I was very curious about it. And so I joined, I joined with a, a Ranger contract, which is uh, 11 Bravo infantry with a Ranger contract, meaning uh, the option to be in the special operations, as long as I don't quit the selection process that was coming, you know, right after basic training. And so I was fortunate enough to get through all of that and then eventually, you know, continue my career as an Army Ranger. Were you, and this might sound like a, a silly question, but I think people would want to know this. You were intrigued by it. You wanted to serve. You mentioned, you know, you had your daughter. Were you scared going into it, knowing that there's a lot of times, you know, you join the military, you never know what's going to happen once you join. But in this case, you knew what was going on. Was was there any part of you that had any sort of trepidation going into it? Uh, you know, honestly, I went into it knowing I chose infantry because I wanted to see the war. Right. I chose infantry because if I was going to do it in my head, I told myself and this very immature version of me was like, if I'm going to do it, let's go all in, you know. And so I already prepared myself for what could have what it could have been the worst thing possible. I, I, I expected there was a chance I was going to get killed in combat but because that was kind of the job I signed up for. Like, let's let's go all in. Um, not until I was there in and about to head to deployment thinking like, oh man, this is, this is getting real. And, the, you know, I started at that time, you know, I'll, 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 I'll talk about it as I did struggle with faith. You know, I got kicked out of a Catholic college. And at the time I struggled with if I wanted to be Catholic or convert to Christianity, there was things in the Catholic faith that I personally was just, I guess, disgruntled with being raised in a very strict Catholic household. And so I started converting into Christianity and then all these hardships happened in my life. I started to kind of like blame God. Right. And so at this, like point, we all do. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> yeah. And so at this point, you know, into well into my second deployment and we started to receive a lot of contact. I just made a post actually last night about this, that um, we were in Mosul, Iraq in 2005 and, and we're, we're, we're taking casualties. We're, you know, every unit around us is taking casualties. It's a really heavy moment in time. And, you know, I, I, I was praying in, in my striker vehicle as we head to a new mission. And I'm like, oh, man, this is getting heavy. <laughs> and at that, that moment, I was kind of like, uh, I, I, you know, I actually prayed. I said, Lord, get me out of this one. Um, I would love to be able to see my daughter again. I would, you know, I had a daughter on the way and, and I was hoping to be able to get to see her. And just things I started like, oh, man, now I'm starting to feel, you know, how heavy and the gravity of it. 
And so I started kind of thinking about all the things that I, I would miss. And, um, you know, and it's kind of why today I, I don't value, you know, monetary things as much as some people do. You know, I don't see those as success. I just really, I value my family and my relationships and, and the connection with my kids because I remember the moment where I really believed that I don't think I was going to make it out of it. And the only thing I thought about was like my mom's cooking, my family and my kids. And you, so you're sitting there, you're praying, get me out of this one. What, what happens in that scenario? You know, we got through the deployment. Um, you know, it was a very heavy deployment and we seen a lot of contact. We, we, we actually at the time was one of the most active deployments in Ranger Battalion history at that time. And, and very fortunate, you know, special operations units, we train like crazy to be good at our job. And we were very successful in that deployment to be able to, you know, to, we, we ended up receiving somewhere around, I think it was some around 15 guys received purple hearts for, for injuries wow. sustained in, in missions, but we, we didn't lose anyone in that deployment and we accomplished uh, some incredible things. So it was, it, it turned out to be awesome. What would you say your biggest lesson was, you know, coming out of the military when you reflect now, and I'm sure it's a lot easier looking back now to say, that's what I learned. That's what I took away. I'm sure there's a lot of things, but what is the biggest lesson for you? And I think that's it. I think you, when you're kind of facing the possibility of death, right, you're <laughs> seeing death happen around you. Um, you start to realize what is important, right? The small things that we kind of, I think, forget become the biggest of importance. They become the most important thing. And, uh, you know, it's something I carry with me. I'll carry with me forever, right? It's not about, you know, when you're on your deathbed, I imagine that I'm not going to be worried about if my cars are going to be okay, if my house is going to be okay. I'm going to be thinking about the, my loved ones, you know, yeah. and, if, and if I've given them enough time and if I've given them enough value and if I've mentored my kids enough and I've told my wife I love her enough, you know, and so – you know, I, I remember that there's not a lot of people that can say that and, and that they can they can appreciate life and the simple things uh, because there's not a lot of people that have been in those moments. And so I think it's a very fortunate thing that I've been past that and I try and keep away from anything dangerous anymore, but uh, that I do appreciate and have gratitude towards simple things like just taking the kids to school. I, I find it to be just like so rewarding. After you've gone through that and you've been in the midst of combat and you've stared death in the face, that that is kind of fascinating to hear how it and it makes sense. It puts everything in perspective for you. And you came home. Now you you worked as a federal agent, I believe, for a while. You could have had a lifelong career there, but at some point, and this is what's so incredible. Like I, I forgot about the baseball part, right? You you're playing ball. <laughs> you know, you're joining you join the military. You come home. You're working for the government. Then you have this idea somehow, <laughs> and I kind of know the backstory, but I want you to explain it, that you're going to be, you're going to become an actor. I mean, here you are, you're an actor and you're a series regular on a show. You've done films. You're continuing to grow your career. What was it? How did it happen that you went from doing all of that into the entertainment field? Yeah. You know, I had a taste of it in college. I was trying to, to keep my grades up for academics and I struggled with that. And so the easy classes were theater classes and I started to fall in love with it by doing some improv classes and theater and teachers were telling me like, man, you have a really, you have a skill here. You should continue. But baseball was so important to me at the time. I kind of pushed that to the wayside. Uh, in, in the military, we would do these things called skits. At the end of the deployment, you kind of make fun of your brothers and brothers and sisters in the platoon by by either either you know mimicking them in some aspect or making fun of something in their character. And I was always up there doing it, and I enjoyed it. I, I really had a rush out of creating these characters. And so eventually, when I was in, in in you know as a federal agent, I have some buddies who are making some YouTube videos. And I just reached back out to him and said, hey, man, I'd, I'd love to help you in any way. And we, I started jumping in these YouTube videos. And those started to really build into something special where I was like, well, YouTube's cool, but how hard would it be for me to actually step into the real world of acting? You know, and so, so you started said, to think about it, though. You started to say to yourself, like, hey, this is fun. What if I could actually do this? Yeah, I mean, you? it's really what sparked it again, that – Man, I remember this feeling. I remember in theater class, and I remember growing up in LA. You you know actors. You run into them. You see them, and it, it's it's kind of growing up in LA. It doesn't seem hard to do 
it is, but it doesn't seem so hard to do because you see actors and actresses all the time. And so as I did the YouTube, I, I really thought like, well, if I was going to try, I better try soon. And, and I had to try and commit to this and, and, and go all in. We produced a movie and that was another like, as soon as we produced a movie, we, we, we raised money, we did crowdfunding, we produced this movie and it's, it's a terrible film in my opinion. Either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> First day on set, I knew this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I told, I turned to my buddy and I said, I will do this forever. This is what I'm going to focus on. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. He goes, I believe it. Boom. Ignored it. Three years later, I'm walking into the audition for Mayans. I, the, fa the fact that I even had a chance to audition for Mayans was like, you know, preparation meets, meets opportunity, timing. And I look the way I look. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, we landed it and, it, you know, it's kind of been, it's just been you know hard to believe ever since it's, we're going up on four years now of this and, you know, Lucy Shimmers, obviously that was a big, big opportunity and, you know, continuing to grow in the space of entertainment. I'm doing a lot of writing now. I'm in a, currently in a, in a writer's guild program, uh, that I graduate in July and I already wow. have a script that I'm excited to be pitching here soon. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to as I have the door open, keep it open, you know, uh, you know, try and turn that, that, you know, that they say that those, those 10 minutes of fame or whatever, I'm trying to turn it to 10 years to 20, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> try to make it last. And, you know, in this space, it's possible um, if you approach it in a very kind of uh, motivated and, and, and keeping, you know, I'm really excited about the career field and I want to continue to grow in it. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And you've had, <clears throat> I feel like, you've had this rare instance of having had four different careers basically. Right. But you know, you've done, and they're all completely different from each other and it led you to this place. And I want to go back to your faith in a moment, but before we do, you brought up Lucy Shimmers and the Prince of Peace. You starred in that film, you played Edgar and it's such a fascinating, heartwarming, it tears at your emotions movie. It's a great film for the holiday season. Tell me a little bit about that role, how you came into it, and just what that process was like. Yeah, you know, me and my wife, you know, we decided to move the family to Salt Lake City, Utah. We really loved it. We heard it was safe for the kids, all these different reasons. And while being here, you know, I wanted to kind of get myself involved into the entertainment scene out here, you know. And so a friend directed me to uh, an acting coach and producer, Rob Diamond. And in our first meeting, you know, I told Rob that I I don't want to play what you think I should play. And, and he goes, oh, I get it. And I said, I, I want to play something that no one would expect. If you have a role for me, uh, I would be interested if it shows real emotion. And in that meeting, he was like, Oh, Vince, he goes, I see it. There's so much heart in you. And like, and, and that's what I would do. And so, so if I find something, I'll let you know. I'm like, cool, cool, perfect. Completely, you know, forgot about it. And just, I'm going on my day and just trying to continue to grow in the acting. He gives me a call. He's like, I, I got a script. I, I, I want you to play the lead. I said, okay, I'll read it, you know? And as I read it that night, I'm on the table and I'm like, <gasps> I'm doing this for sure. I'm doing this. And so we talked it out and you know, my wife was excited about it. I was excited about it. And I told Rob, I said, I'm all in. Just, just tell me when. And so luckily it was during, in a, in a hiatus of filming Mayans, I had the time and super honored to play that character. When you, so you mentioned something interesting, you know, I don't want to play the character you think I need to play. Talk about that a little bit. Do you, yeah. do you feel like you get kind of put into a certain category when people meet you? Yeah, you know, it, it is Hollywood and and I don't think Hollywood means to do it, but you definitely can get put into a a character role because of you look a certain way, you know, and obviously I'm a big guy. I have a lot of tattoos and I think the first thing everyone thinks of me as is the bad guy, the scary guy, the bouncer, you know, and which is fine, which is fine. But uh, I believe in the art of acting in theater and I want the challenge to play something that you don't expect. And I want to bring myself to this character. And look, let's be honest, in real life, I'm a father, right? I might have been a soldier. I might have been law enforcement, but I'm a father who has a heart, who who is emotional, who is real. And um, I think it is even more powerful to see a guy like me be able to reach some of those emotions that are honest. And I think for the viewer, 
it, it think it hits different, you know? Uh, and so that's why I really appreciate the opportunities like that. Yeah, no, that make that makes sense. And with Lucy Shimmers, what is, you don't have to spoil the film because we want people to watch. And if you have watched it, watch it again and you get a chance to kind of go behind the scenes a little bit here. But what is it that you hope that the audience takes away from that film? Change is possible, right? There, for, for my character, Edgar, change is possible. And, and, and that's all it is, is he's trying his best to, to be different, right? There's obviously a past there. And, you know, we're trying our best to, to, to soften this, this hardened person, you know, and I think that's what's impossible. What, what is beautiful about it. And, and, and you know, the main actress in that, in her, her, her real name is Scarlett, right? She is like, she makes it very easy to soften anyone's heart, right? She's just this really beautiful person, you know, and uh, there's something so powerful about her and what she does in that film and kind of connects to everyone, you know, uh, and, and that's what brings in the faith side of it is, is, you know, I really, if, if you break down to me, you can break down faith and however you want, but, you know, I think, you know, love is like the answer for everything. Right. And, and, and it goes back to <clears throat> seeing life in a very hard time in Iraq and, and rooting it all down to what is happiness, what is success. And for me, it always based down to like the relationships of love. I loved my kids. I love my family. I love those memories and I cherish those. And that to me is what I tell people like, that's what makes me rich is knowing the value in those relationships. And Lucy Shimmers, she values the relationships she makes throughout the film. That's a great, that's actually a really wonderful way to summarize that. And, you know, at any point in the year, great, you know, film to watch at this time in the year, at the holidays, considering the themes of the movie, a really good time to be watching it. Now, your faith, you mentioned just kind of going back to that a little bit, you you had that moment. And when I said, you know, like we all do, meaning we all go through moments, I think every human being where we maybe inappropriately blame God for something, or we question God, which I think is a normal human response. Why God? I would imagine going through war, that's something that many people are like, why? Why is this happening? Why are people making these decisions? For you, when you when you left, when you came home, what was your faith journey? Where, where did it kind of go from there? You know, I think <clears throat> it's funny because I deal with this with my kids currently, right? Um, I know I, I, of God, I believe in God, and I can tell you why. Um, and I and for my kids, I try to teach them that. But as well as I know, they'll go through their own journey in in how they discover that moment where they're like, okay, yes, God is is who I believe in. And so for me, you know, I think after that, I really knew like I believe in I believe in God, and I believe in that higher power, and I, and I believe that He's kind of. Uh, it's, it's, I'll say it. It's, it's funny. I don't say it too loud too often. I believe I'm here for a purpose, right? I believe that God's, you know, kept me, kept me around for more. <clears throat> and whether that is to continue to try and do well, you know, and be good and, and inspire and motivate others, then so be it. Whatever it is, uh, you know, I'm here and I'm going to continue to try and push that positive messaging out, you know, and, and hopefully my kids can, see that as a residual effect of like, why is God, why is dad the way he is and what motivates dad, you know, and the root of it all is, you know, there's, there's a belief that, uh, you know, God has made me this way to serve others. I love that. That is so, that is so phenomenal. Where can people find you if they want to follow you, if they want to see what you're up to, where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, you can find me, uh, you know, Instagram is Vincent Rocco Vargas and on Twitter is the real underscore Rocco. Uh, I'm pretty much on every social media platform. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, they can reach out and I answer every single message. So, you know, I'm, I'm there for you. And, uh, you know, you do, you're great about that on social. <laughs> I envy yeah. how good you are on social. <laughs> I follow you. I, I love seeing the responses you give people. Thank you. Well, I listen, appreciate it. thank you so much for your time today. I so appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you so much. Thank you.